Welcome to this week's End of Days Update, coming to you in the most coolest place ever on a cruise ship. We're here with Promise of Life Church, been having such a blast, going from Fort Lauderdale down to St. Kitts and San Juan and Bahamas. We might just circle the globe, who knows? No, we're having a great time preaching here. The church is so hungry, having so much fun. It's good to be out on the seas, having a good time, and hearing the Word, too. So we're coming to you every week to look at the different things that point to the coming of the Lord, and specifically the Ezekiel 38 war, because that happens right after the rapture, because you've got all these nations coming together for that. In fact, you've had Jordan and had Saudi Arabia basically changing their stance just in the last year or so to be friends with Israel because those nations don't attack Israel in the Ezekiel 38 war. So we're looking at what's happening around the Middle East that points to his return because something happens every single week that we don't get a lot of info on, but man, tons of stuff's happening. So let's pick up with what's happened this last week. First of all, you had a little bit more information about all of Israel having to bomb all those different sites in Syria. On top of that, Iran is still gathering up armament on the border of Syria to the point they flew drones in this last week in three different locations. It wasn't just one drone. Uh, one of the sites said it was drone after drone after drone after drone. So you've got, you've got Iran amassing all this military stuff so that they can invade Israel. Along with that, you had Hamas, remember, fire some rockets into Israel last week. They did a few more this week. Also in Jerusalem, they had a bomb that was set up to blow up and kill many people in Jerusalem, but Israel's security forces found out about that. It was from Hamas, and it came out this week that Hamas basically said Iran has filled Gaza with Iranian troops. Now, basically, those are the Hamas troops. They're all Iranian. So you've got Iran on the south. You got Iran on the north. I mean, you have Iranian missile bases uh, seven kilometers and eleven kilometers and forty kilometers from the border of Israel. The one that Israel hit this last week was an oversight uh, viewing location for Iran. And Israel took them right out. So a lot of different things are happening with them, happening with the Kurds, happening with Turkey. It is interesting. This was something cool that I thought was bizarre. Russia came out this last week and took away the use of Syria's S-400 missile defense system, basically allowing Israel to go in anytime they need to and bomb Iranian targets. Now that's bizarre because in the past that's not happened like that. So a lot of changes are happening to give Israel a little bit more leeway to stop those uh, uh, shipments that are coming down. You don't hear it one time in the news. There's a 747 three times a week flying into Syria with armament from Iran. No word at all in the regular news media. But you have in the news media even talking about on the Strait of Hormuz, you got Israel hooking up to help America to, to guard the Strait of Hormuz. And then 60 other nations uh, basically came into agreement that we've got to protect that, that area because you got, you got Iran attacking uh, English tankers and then saying they're not doing it, and then going in through helicopters and taking their crew captive and saying they didn't do it. And then they said they were, weren't international waters when they were in international waters. So a lot of stuff is happening with Iranians' uh, cybercrime. Iran came out this last week and showed publicly that they're enriching uranium beyond what they had been before. I love that there's pressure being put on them through sanctions to not act like they're acting, but that's basically what they're doing. They want to annihilate Israel. In the middle of that, you had the Sanhedrin in Israel come out and say that President Trump was acting like the one from Edom that was going to help them rebuild the temple. That's pretty crazy because in the middle of the same week, you had the Temple Mount Institute this week say, we're, stop, we're stopping to mourn about the temple being overthrown. We're not mourning about the temple. We're rejoicing in the, the readiness to get ready to build the third temple. Temple. So you've got groups in Israel that are making preparation for what's going to happen after the church leaves. So there's many things happening. You have Russia uh, basically flew into international waters on the edge of Alaska. We didn't actually escalate it by sending fighters. We normally send fighters. But you had four Soviet bombers there on the edge of America sending a message to America. So there's many things that came out this last week that the verbiage was about World War III. I mean, you had earthquakes in Tennessee. You had earthquakes in Japan. And the Bible talks about corruption and violence. You can't get much more violent than all the shooting that you've seen in the last couple of weeks. I was kind of freaked out that everybody blamed the president over people killing people. So there's just a weird mentality of blame for Lucifer being Lucifer in the earth. Because the Bible plainly says that the people would be, it'd be just like the days of Noah. So that's what you're seeing. The main thing you're seeing, though, is the a resurgence of every nation coming together to get ready for the entrance of the king. So what do we do in the church? Okay, you look at the signs. What are the signs for? The signs show us how close we are. I've told you before, I had a guy say, well, if you preach on the coming of the Lord, Joe, you just get everybody's hopes up. Duh, that's exactly right. It's the hope that purifies us even as we're pure. So you got Israel made a nation. You got Jerusalem one back. 
You got the Hebrew language restored. You got Ethiopian Jews brought back. You got the fertility of the land of Israel. You got 172 different species of predatory birds. I mean, you have all these tangible physical signs that point to the coming of the Lord. Why would the Lord go to so much trouble? He loves you. He wants you filled with joy, filled with strength. He actually wants you excited. If you can't get excited when you see all these signs, something's wrong with you. So God has overloaded the Bible with verse after verse after verse of what it would look like right before the Lord came back. And then you have all these tangible signs, many more. Men will be lovers themselves. We have selfie sticks. you got fish showing up in the Dead Sea. That was prophesied 2,700 years ago, came to pass this year. So tangible, physical things pointing to His return. And you got signals. You had the blood red moons on Passover and Tabernacles. Crazy. When's the last time you had four in a row on Passover and Tabernacles? 1967 when Jerusalem was won back. 1948 when Israel's made a nation. 1492 at the Edict of Expulsion when the Jews were kicked out of Spain. So you had that, then you had the Bethlehem Star last year. That one's really cool. You should look up uh, the uh, Bethlehem Star on YouTube and look at the bonus feature, two minutes long. It shows you exactly what the heavens were doing when Jesus died at 3 p.m. on that Friday. Amazing. You see the Lamb. You see the heart of the Lamb go dark right there. An eclipse covering up the sun as the heart of the Lamb when Jesus died for our sins. Come on. Three in the afternoon. The flawlessness of that showing you the heavens making known the will and the plan, the purpose of God. So you had that. You had many more, uh, which that's pretty radical. Uh, so we're privileged. We're blessed. What do we do? Help your local church. Help your local pastor. Get the message out. Have an accelerated mentality to do the will of God. We don't fit church into our life. It is our life. As busy as everyone is, we don't go, hey, should I come to church now? No, no, no. We're running our race. We get strengthened by hearing the word. The Bible tells us to gather all the more as you see the day approaching. So we're so privileged. Jesus gave his life for us, and all of a sudden we're going to see him face to face. Awesome. Live your life like you're going to see him face to face. Have a blessed, awesome Wednesday. We'll come see you next week. We'll see what's happening around Israel. There'll be much more happening, pointing to the temple being rebuilt, pointing to everyone trying to kill Israel. It's a sign that we're about to see Jesus face to face. Have a blessed, awesome week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks for joining us today at the End of Days Update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the EDU, and we'll see you next week.